Hello, I'm Pastor Bill Vigu of Meet of the Word Ministries, and you're watching Let Us Go On. Now, the last session I dealt with a subject that I think is very important for every Christian and every person to understand, and that is the Great Commission leadings of the Holy Spirit. Now, last week we talked about the Great New Testament commissions, plural. Very important for us to understand there's not just one detail, just not just getting saved is, is not the only detail of what God wants to do in your life. He wants us to get out there and serve, bear fruit. So we're gonna continue that today and look at some Bible examples of how God's Holy Spirit will lead us into fulfilling the Great Commission in detail. Now, when last week or last session, I, I talked a little bit about hitting the target like with a bow and arrow, hitting the bullseye, not just the whole gamut of the target and being grateful that you hit the target, but the bullseye, honing into something very, very specific, what God wants you to do in its timing. Now, before I get into that today, I want to talk to you a little bit about a book that just got published. My wife wrote it, my wife Barbara, and my daughter Gabrielle. And several years ago, I guess it was six or seven years ago, uh, my daughter had been ill. We were down in Florida, and she was up in Washington, D.C., and all of a sudden, my wife gets the phone call, Mom, I've got cancer. She had gone to the doctor. Well, you know that was a scary report. It was a frightening moment in our lives, but we made a decision that we believed in what God's word had to say in regards to divine healing. So I, I rushed up there. I'm not gonna tell the whole story here. The book will tell the story, explain the story. But it's a journey, a, a book regarding the journey of faith. Again, my wife gives some tremendous Bible teaching on the subject of divine healing and areas such as what hinders people from receiving the miracle that they need or receiving what God has already provided, divine healing. And uh, then the last chapter, I want to encourage you to read uh, my daughter's testimony, how she fought the good fight of faith. See, she had to be obedient in her area as well. She had to do what God wanted her to do. But today she's totally clear of cancer and she had a serious case of it. Uh, it was a frightening time. I mean, at least we could have uh, allowed the devil to frighten us and scare us off and, and given in. But she fought the good fight of faith. We fought it with her. She had some good friends around her that fought with her and believed God with her. But of course, we had a lot of people that didn't believe in those things. And so you have that working against you, trying to hinder your faith. And we've got to put a stop to that. We've got to allow to do or allow what the Holy Spirit would say to us, fear not, we've got to go on. All right, let's get into the, today's message here. Again, the great New Testament commissions, plural. Now, we looked at several scriptures last session. Uh, we talked about how Jesus had said the necessity of repentance, also the necessity of teaching all nations, baptizing them, number three, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, the fullness of the Trinity. Hey, uh, also, he, he, he talked to us about the necessity of having and being endued with power from on high. And another point, very important, is that we have and there is a necessity for you and I to fight the good fight of faith or simply spoken, we're, uh, the necessity for us to be obedient to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Again, the Apostle Paul wrote in the, his letter to the uh, Romans in chapter 8, verse 14, for as many as are led by the Holy Spirit of God, they are the sons of God not just the disciples or apostles or anything like that. They are the sons of God. Very important that we understand the word as well, uh, translated in, you know, in our English as led, led by the Holy Spirit. In the Greek, it means to drive. He will drive you, push you, take you somewhere, drive you, accompanying you, kind of like a chauffeur in that sense, and then to bring you to a, a place of a destination. And so I want us to look today at a couple Bible illustrations and examples of, um, of the Holy Spirit leading us. Now, again, under the old covenant, before we were, you know, the new birth was available, the New Testament new birth was available, people were led by God. They were spoken to by God. You can take a consideration about Noah. God spoke to Noah. And Noah, you know, was commanded to build the ark for, and he built the ark, you know, you know, in obedience, he understood. God spoke to him, not by the Holy Spirit so much. Well, I, I shouldn't say that, but 
uh, I'm sure it was the Holy Spirit was involved, but it's not the same way a New Testament Christian is led. He understood what God had to say. Same thing with Gideon. An angel appeared to Gideon. Gideon said when the angel called him a, a great man of God, uh, you know, a warrior of God, he looked and said, well, where are our miracles? Well, they were only a few moments away, a few minutes away, a few hours away, a few days away. God was going to use him and did use him to do perform a miracle. Gideon understood the same thing with Abraham. You think about that, he was called the friend of God because God spoke to him intelligently, spoke to him on his level of his thinking. But today we're gonna to consider some of these directions of the Holy Spirit, the New Testament, uh, leadings of the Holy Spirit to fulfill and hit a bullseye uh, in regards to what God wants you to do. Now, keep in remembrance now that the Great Commission includes us preaching and teaching to all nations and to every creature. So that's the commandment, that's the charge. God told us to preach and teach the word of God to every creature, to all nations. That's what we're supposed to do. I know that they will sit there and criticize us as saying, well, you're one of those Bible believing, gun toting, you know, Walmart people. <laughs> it shows that I watch a little bit of Fox News, I guess. But, uh, you know, there are a lot of people that'll mock and ridicule and scoff at us in regards to our confidence and trust in God and our attempt to allow the Holy Spirit to lead us. But the Great Commission is very clear in its general sense. Go, teach all, teach them all to everything I commanded you. Teach them to observe all those things that I taught you, not just one thing, but all those things. Tell them about the importance of repentance and the remission of sin, baptizing them in the name of the Lord. Go into all the world, preach and teach the gospel. We're told to do that. But let's take a look at a couple of examples here, how God helps us to lead us to fulfill that great commission. And I wanna read here from Acts chapter 16, uh, beginning with verse six. Now the apostle Paul and Barnabas have been separated by the Holy Spirit in chapter 13 as, a, as apostles or sent ones. And after their first journey, they kind of broke up and went their own ways, sent by the Holy Spirit. In chapter 16, we see that Jesus I'm sorry, the Apostle Paul took on another young man by the name of Silas and Timothy. And so he now is going to be led by the Holy Spirit. He's got a group of people that are helping him to fulfill the work. And it says in Acts chapter 16, verse six, now when they had gone throughout Persia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden. They were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. Now, wait a minute. The Bible says go into all the world. And now all of a sudden, the Apostle Paul is being told and being, uh, you know, misdirected. Let, 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 let's look at this Greek word forbidden here for a moment. It means to prevent. The Holy Spirit prevented, hindered, withheld or withhold and denied and refused the Apostle Paul to preach the word in Asia. Now we know later on, chapter 18, 19, and 20, that the Apostle Paul did go to Asia under great inspiration, such a great revival that uh, it was actually one of the, it was probably a greater revival. I believe it was by far the greatest revival, even greater than the outpouring of the Holy Spirit uh, you know, in Jerusalem in the initiation of the church back then on the day of Pentecost and 5,000, 3,000 got saved another day. Uh, it says all the world heard the word of God being preached from Asia. So the Apostle Paul eventually did go to Asia, but at this particular moment, it was not God's leading for him to go to Asia. He, they were forbidden. Again, the word forbidden here in the Greek, not for, forget your English dictionary, the original language says to prevent, to hinder, to withhold, to deny, and to refuse, it says, they were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. Verse seven says, after they were come into Maestra, they essayed, uh, they essayed or to go into Bethania, but the spirit suffered them not to go there. And they passed by Mysia and came down to Troas. 
And a vision appeared to Paul in the night, and there stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to seek uh, or endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Now I want to highlight some of these Greek words that are in this King James translation. Again, I've already mentioned the word forbidden. The Holy Spirit forbid them to preach the word in Asia at that time. Later on, he would clearly lead them. But it tells us or shows us that the Apostle Paul was such a mature Christian in fulfilling the Great Commission and all these signs that would follow him that believe, and he was a believer, and all those signs did follow him. You know, whether it was the casting out of devils, that was one of his first miracles that he did, uh, first assignments, being led by the Holy Spirit to cast out an unclean spirit from a woman that was you know, interrupting him, uh, to speak with new tongues, to take up serpents or teachings and lies of the devil, remove them from the minds and the thoughts of people. And uh, if they drink any deadly thing or, or drink any deadly thing of the cup of the demons, any, they absorb any bad teaching, it will not hurt them that believe. And then also they will lay hands on the sick. All these things followed the Apostle Paul and his followers, followed the Lord Jesus Christ and all of his follow, followers. But here we see the Apostle Paul is very sensitive to the direction and leading of the Holy Spirit. Again, this is a sign of maturity, that you, you may have one general view of what God wants you to do, but you don't have anything specific. And now here's the maturity of a Christian. As you mature in the things of God, you hone in and say, God, I know your will is for me to preach to every creature. So any creature that anybody that's out here, any person that's out here, human being, I can preach and I can teach, whether it's TV or radio or you know, you know, out in the streets or in a pulpit somewhere. I should do that. I can do that. That is your great commission in general. But now send me and lead me. You know where I will be most effective. And that's what I, and that's what, you know, a seeker of God wants to do. They want to have specific direction from the Holy Spirit. So the Apostle Paul obviously was being, you know, seeking God. And when he sought the Lord, he was ready to go into Asia, but he was forbidden. The Spirit of God forbid him. Then it said that uh, they went into Bethania, but the Spirit suffered them not to go there either. And the word suffered here in the Greek means he did not permit or to allow them to go there. Then third, and we'll pick up reading here in verse 9, chapter 16 of the book of Acts. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. And, and there stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him or asked him in this vision saying, come over into Macedonia and help us. That's what the gospel is. The gospel of the kingdom of God is to help human beings or humanity. Help us live and thrive on this earth to overcome the devil instead of being defeated of the devil and being lied to of the devil and living in darkness he wants us to live in the light and so you know paul here has a vision why didn't god give the vision to silas or or uh timothy and maybe he did but they didn't seem to you know if if he did they didn't seem to pick up on it but the apostle paul being led by the holy spirit has this vision he didn't create this vision it wasn't a pizza vision overeating or something like that. It was a leading of the Holy Spirit. And so it says here, and after, after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored. The Greek word here, endeavored, means to seek and to plan to go into Macedonia. Now this is important for us to understand as well. As a Christian, a sign of maturity in our lives is if you feel you're led by the Holy Spirit to do something, to be somewhere at some particular point in life and God is leading you and he you know if you don't know this if you don't know the things of God you're not sensitive to the things of God you know it seems like almost like it's an accident but it's a divine 
act of God's providence. I mean, I could tell you story after story of God's divine providence working in my life uh, that was meaningful, but I didn't understand it. I didn't know what was going on. I don't know, know why I was where I was at that particular time, why I'd been hindered to go where I planned to go. Didn't know what was the, what was the issue, but God had a destiny, had a destination for me. And same thing with you. He has a destination. He has something specific for us to do in fulfilling God, God's great commission to us. So it says we endeavored. So it means here, it tells us that he actually, once they had that vision, Paul talked to them, his, his entourage and his followers, his work, fellow laborers together, he spoke to them about it and they immediately gathered together and they began to seek God. That means they prayed, they sought God in prayer, they talked to God in prayer. I think without question that they took some time to pray in the Holy Spirit in other tongues. The Bible says that you know, he that speaketh in another tongue seek, uh, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. And he's speaking or praying by the Spirit. He's talking to God. I don't, it's above my intellect. It's above my understanding. You know, I, I don't even know English very well. And I can speak a few French words and... <laughs> And sometimes they're the, the words that I can remember are more curse words than they were monsieur and things like that. Uh, but um, it's important for us to understand these things that there is a higher level. There are things that we don't understand that God does. He understands everything. He knows everything. And he's doing the best he can to get our soul, which is our mind, our will, our emotions, our intellect, in line with that leading of the Holy Spirit. And so they began to seek and they began to plan how they were going to go into Macedonia. And then it says in this phrase here, assuredly gathering. Now, if you read it from the King James <coughs> or pretty much any English translation, it just seemed that uh, it says that they were assured they, they had assessed everything that was going on and they were assured that this was the leading of the Holy Spirit. But the phrase here, assuredly gathering, means to unite and knit together a plan. So they, they made a decision, let's unite. You know, Paul might have said, all right, I had a vision, God told us to go do this. You know, I had a vision, you know, go to Macedonia. So we're seeking God, how do you want us to go? Where do you want us to go? When do you want us to go? Uh, what's the, the path? What's the road? What's the, the route? What's the avenue? What's the EPS? You know, things of that nature to move forward. Uh, they sought God, but they united together. The importance of working together to be in agreement with one another. Yeah, I agree with you, Paul. Yeah, Silas. Silas would say to Timothy, come on, Timothy. He had a vision. Let's trust, you know, Paul that He's, he's speaking on behalf of God. Let's not allow the liturgical denominational enforcement and controlling uh, of us, you know, uh, telling us what we can and what cannot preach. Let's let the Holy Spirit be the, the God of this world. Let's let the Holy Spirit be the leader. Let's follow him. And so they united together. They assessed a situation and, and worked together, knit together a plan. That the, Lord, that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel unto them in, in Macedonia. And so they did, and make a long story short, Paul went in there. They, they didn't even, that, that, the first place they went into in that region, it's kind of like going into a state like Connecticut. I was from Connecticut. I live today in North Carolina. Lived for six, seven years in, in Florida. You know, those are all provinces or states of the United States. Asia and this whole European area, it was the same thing. They had, they had different regions. And so they're now gonna go into that region and the first place they go to, uh, they didn't even have a church there. There was no Christian church there. There was no Jewish church or synagogue there. And so they heard that there was some women that gathered together by a riverside and that prayer was known to be made over there. So on the Sabbath, they went to the riverside, gathered together with the women. You know, how important it is for us to understand and release and allow the Holy Spirit to direct us again, instead of following the liturgical enforcements of denominations, allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us. Paul was not afraid 
to have another woman speak into his life, have another woman cherished and be called a fellow laborer with him. Women, children, we need everybody preaching and teaching the word of God. So um, Paul goes down there and then they, you know, make a long, again, make a long story short, things didn't look good in the beginning, circumstances didn't seem to line up. Uh, Paul and Silas were whipped and beaten and put into prison. But when they prayed and sang praises to God at midnight, suddenly God sent a sign and a wonder of deliverance for them. An earthquake that broke the shackles and the chains. And as a result of that sign and that miracle, the people in that prison bowed down to uh, the God that the Apostle Paul served and uh, they became Christians and they started a church in Philippi, the central city of that area. Now let's look at another example here in Acts chapter 10. And I usually communicate this and tell the story, but I wanna read some of the fine details here. So again, reading from the King James translation, we'll look at some of the Greek words as well, the original depth meaning of those words. It says on the morrow, after the, Peter had gone down uh, to Joppa, it says Peter went up upon a mount, uh, a housetop to pray. You know, Peter was an apostle. Why didn't everything just happen automatically? You know, like what we we think instant food, instant you know fast food, what a restaurant or whatever. Peter went up to pray. He wanted to talk to God. He needed to talk to God. He needed a sense of direction. He wasn't just it wasn't just going to happen. He had to initiate it. He had to take his uh, responsibility. He had to be obedient. The Bible teaches us very clearly Christians are to pray, seek God, go to God and say, God, what do you want me to do today? And Peter's going to have some specific direction. And it says, Peter went up unto the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And it says he became very hungry and he would have eaten. But while they were making a meal ready, it says that he fell into a trance. The word, the Greek word, the Greek definition for the word in our King James called trance or vision is a displacement of mind. Now the Bible teaches us that the word of God is so powerful, so quick and powerful, so living, so alive, that it can distinguish between the spirit and the soul of a man. Again, we are a three-part being. We're not a you know, you're looking at me, maybe you're listening to me right now. You might be able to hear my voice or if you're watching this by video, you can see my body, but I'm not the body. You know, the, the body is where I live. It's like my house, my case, my vessel that I live in. I am a spirit that possesses a soul and I live in a body. The same thing with every other creature on the face of this earth or every other human being on the face of this earth. You, have, you live in a body, but you have a spirit that needs to be regenerated or be born again. And Jesus said a man must be born again, has to be born again, but you also possess a soul. You're not a soul, you possess a soul. And again, the soul is different than the spirit. It's separate from, uh, it, it's displaced from the mind. So Peter, all of a sudden, he, he's praying and. Now all of a sudden, his human instinct is, gee, I'm getting hungry, you know, you know, I I'm ready to eat. I'll have something to eat. And when they went to go over there to prepare a meal for him, he fell into a trance, not into a sleep, but into a trance, it says, and a displacement of mind. And he saw heaven opened and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet knit on four corners and it let down to the earth from the heavens, wherein there were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowl of the, uh, fowls of the air, birds of the air. And there came a voice to him. Now all of a sudden, Peter in this trance, this displacement of mind, he hears the voice of the Holy Spirit saying to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spoke unto him and said again a second time, when God hath, whatever God has cleansed, that do not call common. Now let's pause here for a moment and think, uh, a look at these two words. The word common refers to profane or unholy, unhallowed, 
Unclean means impure and not clean. And so Peter is describing the fact that I've never eaten anything that is unholy or profane or forbidden or impure or has not yet been cleansed. But God says, don't, you know, don't call that which has been, you know, that God has cleansed unclean. Then it goes on to say, uh, it, it says, and now while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen meant. Now, he was doubting it. His, this displacement of mind is taking place in his, in his soul. And he's doubting it. He doesn't know what it means. So he, he's questioning it, questioning it. The word doubted here in the Greek means to be perplexed in himself, in his mind, his intellect. He's, he's doubting it. He's perplexed. He does not understand it. In other words, it's not a word that he clearly understands. He clearly hears it, but he doesn't understand it. What does it mean? He's questioning the meaning of the vision. And it says here that suddenly the Spirit of God spoke to him again and, and said, listen, P Peter, it says, and while Peter thought or pondered and deliberated on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, behold, Three men seek you. Arise, go with them, doubting nothing. Don't be perplexed about this, for I have sent them. So here again is another clear example of the leading of the Holy Spirit for Peter to hone in, to target, to hit a bullseye in fulfilling the Great Commission. And there's a supernatural story that took place. Cornelius was just a, an unsaved person, but he feared God, he believed in God. And as a result, God sent him a, 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 an angel to communicate to him, but told him where Peter was specifically and said, send people, delegate to people uh, a responsibility to go over there and find this man, Peter. He's in Joppa up on that housetop. Go and get him. And the result was a, a miracle of that family. His entire family household was saved as a result. Now, these are leadings of the Holy Spirit. You, you should have your own experiences in your own life where the Holy Spirit will help you lead, but you've got to do your praying. You've got to do your seeking. You've got to say, God, I want to do your will. And, and not just have it be words, have it have meaning inside your soul. Now, I'll close with this. Father, bless these people that hear the word, make it an impact in their lives. God bless you.